welcome back to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us for another interesting half an hour of conversation about the great issues of the day. Uh, joining me today, Ken Risto, who is the Social Studies Coordinator for the Sheboygan Area School District. Close. We're getting closer <laughs> with my title. Could have said you I'm were trying. Semi coordinator. <laughs> semi coordinator. Or semi coordinated. You know, what, whatever well, that's it is. True too. There you go. Tom Pineski, math professor at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan. Cal Potter, bon vivant, retired state, <laughs> <laughs> retired state senator, uh, retired from the Department of Public Instruction in charge of libraries. So, uh, and I'm just a humble lawyer, so I'm in, lucky to be in such august, uh, august company. So, and boy, do we have a lot to Damn talk right. about. <laughs> so, okay. um, and you just do need to tone down. But um, we had. Um, uh, Taken bets at the on our last Donahue uh, show uh, state episode about the AG's race uh, came out I think kind of as we predicted but I was pretty stunned by the numbers uh, Peg Lautenschlager got as one of my law partners would say got schwetzed <laughs> uh, a true schwetzing um, I didn't think it'd be that bad and I my own view is Kathleen Falk did not run a real interesting or Mm -mm. dynamic campaign in any way, <coughs> shape, or form. Uh, so I was kind of surprised. It was the o only at the end that um, I think she decided that really needed to raise the DUI issue and the ethics issue. Um, I think the uh, accusations about uh, the, de the delays at the crime lab really would have, I think, really resonated with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the kind of stuff people get their teeth into. And a Republican uh, candidates really raised that. Exactly. So it kind of probably rubbed off. And it I think, and I, think yeah. I know, I actually am glad I still have my shirt because I, I really thought until, you know, I, didn't, I thought all the way to the end that Peg was going to prevail. I was pretty surprised when I listened to the election results and they were talking about it, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the evening saying that she was coming from behind if, at best. And, but the last week and a half, I think, I think maybe a lot of Democrats said, you know, who's our strongest candidate? Because if she's got to slog through the DUI and slog through the delays in the crime lab, and, and I thought Falk made a nice point as an executive saying, you know, you can't use lack of money as an excuse for not getting the job done. I mean, I've had to do that all the time as a county executive, and you just prioritize what you need to pay for. And I think, I think somewhere along the way, some, a lot of Democrats changed their mind. Mm -hmm. I th I th that, was a, that was an excellent issue, and the Republicans framed it, and I think Falk got in on the framing of the issue, and I think Lautenschlager was just, there was no response except to say there was no money. I was told to cut my budget, and that's what I did. Yeah. I mean, it's, once you answer the issue, you're done, and, yeah. and I do think that was a final nail in the coffin. So. And I think public uh, tolerance for the chief uh, law enforcement yeah. officer in breaking the law, literally drunk driving, mm -hmm. uh, is one where people maybe like to drink in Wisconsin, but they don't want their sheriff or they don't want their AG to, to be uh, inviting overly. And I think there was less tolerance for that. Yeah. I think the car ethics, the use of the car too, really. When I oh, talked yeah. to some folks, and that was hardly a representative poll, but the drunk driving, well, you know, was once. Hopefully she learned her lesson. But when you start looking at the use of the car, people just uh, in this day and age just don't have a whole lot of tolerance for the old perks of public service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's too so. bad because I think Peg. Lautenschlager has been a wonderful public servant over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, she has pretty much dedicated yeah. her life to, to public service and, uh, and has been a, a good and decent person. So She did well in places where they really knew her. She did very right. well in Fond du Lac, where mm -hmm. she uh, was, is from, and where she represented the, those folks in the legislature. She did well in Sheboygan County, which mm -hmm. is close. She did very so well in Sheboygan so, County. So you know, I think uh, people who knew her did overlook some mm -hmm. of her transgressions. But elsewhere in the state where they didn't know her, well, there was not a lot of sympathy. Right. How well, did she I, do in Dane County? She did better than expected because okay. so everybody thought that here are the county exec. Yeah. But I right. think the problem there is anybody who is a mayor or a county exec uh, brings along, after years in office, baggage of alienate people. And I think okay. that, was, that was a problem mm -hmm. that uh, Kathleen had in her own home community. Yeah. Okay. Well, and uh, Kathleen Falk, I think, is a strong candidate. Even now, though, I don't know much about the difference much between Van Holland and Booker. I thought Booker's comments on election night about not being willing to mortgage his life in order to run mm -hmm. 
uh, an election, and uh, hopefully we'll have some time to talk about money and uh, and so forth in in our electoral lives these days. But um, you know, I, I happen to tune in when in, to a Charlie Sykes show uh, when you had Booker and uh, Van Hollen on. Were you being punished? And and <laughs> and uh, it sounded like uh, it was uh, two kids playing in the sandbox and throwing sand at each other. Really? And Booker just came off to my mind. It's just. A little, a little more mean-spirited. I, I was surprised it wasn't closer, but they both sounded like they're, they're you know, that's my sand. No, that's my sand. And, you know, back and forth. And, and it just, I thought, what's going on here? These are, it, this is a TV, this is a radio show, and it's going out over Milwaukee. So I saw a transcript of, <laughs> of a pretty nasty exchange. I didn't know it came out of uh, maybe that menu, or maybe it was a debate where they. I think there was I a think debate brought on, him on to talk about issues. Yeah, 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 I saw the debate on 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 public television, and, and it was the same sort of dynamic going on between the two of them. And I thought, you know, wow, the Democrats are running the cameras, and there's going to have they're going to have a lot of stuff to be running on uh, yeah. in mm -hmm. the months to come. Yeah. Well, any ideas? Uh, any predictions? Um, uh, in the AG's race as we uh, go down the line here. I think Kathleen Falk it has been a, a strong campaigner. I, I didn't think she did much in her mm -hmm. AG campaign, but when she entered the governor's race late in 2002, she picked up a lot of steam pretty quickly, and I think she's a good campaigner. I don't know anything about Van Hollen. Um, uh, he's got a nice tagline, and I forget it's on, on those great big signs, something about restoring integrity or whatever, so maybe trying to tar Falk with, with uh, the Lautenschlager brush, if I can say that, but uh, what do you think? I think one of the problems that uh, Kathleen will have will be the accusation that she has not uh, been a, a real prosecutor in her career, even though she spent, what, 16 years in the Attorney General's office as an assistant to Attorney General, she was the public intervener and did a great deal in the area of environmental law. Um, but I think uh, it's going to take a little sophistication on the part of the voter to realize that the Attorney General doesn't spend every day in court. I mean, the Attorney General is a chief officer of a, of a several hundred employee agency and makes administrative decisions uh, on a daily basis and doesn't spend, like I said, time in, every day in a court. But I think that's probably what Ben Holland is going to probably hang his hat on, the fact that he's an, been an active prosecutor and she's been sort of the environmental attorney. Right. Right, and I mean, we do have 72 district attorney's offices, I think, in the state, and they're the prosecutors. I mean, the attorney mm -hmm. general. It was odd for Lautenschlager to have done the, the trial of the uh, hunter up yeah. north, yeah, so, yeah. and yeah. that may have been done primarily for, you know, political what reasons. You I, <laughs> you know me, think? I'm the neutral person in this group. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but I thought it was terrible political grandstanding yeah. and. Uh, uh, and of course, if I were the prosecutor in that county, I'd be pretty, pretty unhappy about it. But or pretty happy. <laughs> well, they're yeah, pretty happy because if you don't get a conviction, yeah, then, yeah. then it's going to be hell to pay. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to. I don't know how it's going to play out. It may have something to do with Green wins. Will he sweep along? Will there be a Republican tide that will sweep Van Hollen in? Um, Depends on in public. Uh, <laughs> I think perception on some of the groups that will be supporting Van Holland. Uh, one of the ads that's being run now is for manufacturers and commerce. Uh, are the manufacturers, uh, WMC, is, is, is characterizing her role as public intervener is nothing more than providing nuisance lawsuits right. for the private sector, which uh, when I saw that ad, I was, I was livid because in many cases, I mean, there are companies just like individuals in this world, some, many of them, most are good, but there are some out there who will pollute water and do things that they shouldn't be doing. And not all of those lawsuits that she pursued over the years were frivolous lawsuits. But uh, if WMC is going to spend literally big bucks um, as, as supplemental to Van Hollen's whatever wealth he supposedly mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Kathleen will be able to muster the, the dollars. Now, will environmental groups come out and do their independent expenditures like WMC is? I don't know. Yeah, well, and that's tough. I mean, that's, again, an issue that has to be framed just yes. right. And if WMC has already framed it and she's answering, it, it could be potentially pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And educating people in an election year as to what the Attorney General's office does, I mean, right. it's a big, complex agency. Or even that what the deals public with, intervener is. It's right. been gone for so many years, a right. lot of people probably don't even know what it is or was. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, that leads us into um, 
just a couple of different things. Uh, I, I, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about the political. We're back in the political ad season. And when we talk about money in politics, we never connect the dots, which is what percentage of that money goes to TV stations? Not this <laughs> one, goodness knows, because this is a public television this station. This is a poor public television. It's a poor public television <laughs> High quality, station. but poor in dollars. That's right. right. You know, we want different wallpaper, but <laughs> <laughs> someday we'll get that, but only through a private endowment gift, I think. Um, TV stations make a whole lot of money. I mean, most of I, that I can see of what is spent in political campaigns is on really nasty, misleading, unhelpful uh, television ads that mm -hmm. contribute nothing to the political discourse, that encourage shallow thinking and emotional responses, and really don't help us be very good citizens. But um, in any event, Let's, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. A new poll out today says that the gap is closing between uh, Green and Doyle. Um, Green has had, boy, he sure has had his troubles recently in terms of his, his money. Um, the decision of the Dane County judge to um, not to stay the elections board decision. Doyle seems to have been tarred with that again by having a lawyer from his campaign contacting election uh, 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 members of the board. What do you think? Where's the, where's, where are we going on this? Um, I'm not necessarily looking for a Doyle Green prediction. I think it's a little early. I think that I think it's a race that's clearly in play. But uh, I, I just I'll just volunteer that since Green has lost the money, he could uh, get this in the public eye as, and consider that PR <coughs> for him. You know, the more I bring this issue forward, uh, the more it doesn't cost me anything, <laughs> and the more I could kind of tar mm -hmm. Doyle. Mm -hmm. you're, I, think I don't you're, think it's working I think it that way. I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, I don't think I it's think working that, that way. I think that if Green were smart, I don't know who's running his campaign, but he should be sent, you know, packing, is what you would say is, uh, I disagree with this decision, you know, almost like Al Gore here. I disagree with this decision. Um, when two, you know, several years ago, when the current mayor of Milwaukee wanted to transfer, you know, his funds from his congressional campaign into the mayoral campaign in Milwaukee, he was allowed to do it. Clearly, the Democrats are changing the rules, which plays into his whole theme that the Doyle, the Doyle, the Doyle is corrupt. And uh, I'll continue to raise money by, you know, he he's not going to say this publicly by having Air Force One and Air Force Two continuing to come in. But you know, yeah. the vice president was just in the other day again raising funds for him. And we'll raise funds, and we'll, and this campaign is going to be about whatever and you move on. But when you announce that we're going to take this all the way to the Supreme Court, you're just keeping the issue in front of people and you're, and you're, and you're, and you're just, I don't see how that's a win-win for him. Well, interestingly know. enough, Doyle was the one who brought the challenge to Barrett being allowed to, to bring that, that mm -hmm. money from the federal to the state level. And I think, what, I think what the Dayton County judge said is things have changed because of the um, uh, McCain-Feingold Act Right. That just isn't allowed anymore. So, in fact, it's not the Democrats changing, at least the local or state Democrats yeah. changing the rules. Um, there's a new federal law now that, that would prohibit that, and it, that seems to make at least some amount of sense to me. But that's going to take about 14 news cycles before that kind of percolates in the average voter's head. Right. Well, Where if you can say, hey, listen, the rules were used to be when it was a Democrat running, wasn't, that's wasn't, kind of what wasn't people Wasn't that a state law, though? Wasn't this a state law? If the PACs are not in the state, you can't transfer the money? And the, some of these, some of the monies came from no, PACs out of the state. If it were in the state, it could be no. transferred. I thought that was no issue there. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the the, the, the administrative code in, in 1977, according to the judge's decision, did allow that transfer, mm -hmm. and that's why Barrett was able to do it in. Mm. Oh, in, from out of state. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And. The huge amount of PAC money that Green is tra is transferring in is out of state money. Of the five hundred eighty-seven thousand or so, four hundred and sixty-seven thousand is from. Don't quote me on the numbers, but I mean it's fairly close. Are uh, is is out of state money, and so again, there's just this huge infusion of cash in a thirty million dollar campaign. Most of it spent on television ads, and and what's the issue? There's no issue that's resonating. I mean, we're not talking about jobs. We're not talking about health care or the environment or, or, or the anything budget. like that. I mean, I mean neither candidate. But my point real quickly was, 
you know, it's $586,000. You get 586 people to show up at a $1,000 plate dinner, and that money's already made up, and you've moved mm -hmm. on, and the issue no, isn't in front of people. So I just don't know what, what's the point of saying I'm going to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah, But, I mean, I agree. neither, neither uh, candidate was helpful in the public television debates about getting real about the, the budget. I thought both... Both gentlemen were really pushed hard by the audience, uh, which were average citizens, evidently. Well, none of the ads yeah. have hit the issue. Oh, no. I mean, they're just, it's just like the sandbox analogy that Tom yep. used before. It's just throwing sand at each other. I think what's so sad about this whole thing is that um, whoever becomes uh, governor is just going to be probably so shredded in image that that person's not going to be very popular to start out as, a, as the new governor or, or an existing governor into a new term. Yeah. It's sad. Well, um, interestingly enough, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I thought, I thought Green was actually taking a couple of steps forward when he started resurrecting uh, the issue where he's at the hockey game, I believe it is. And uh, they're talking about, yeah, the admissions issue. I think the ads, like all ads on both sides, are we're, we're a little deceptive uh, when you look behind what the, the tuition, in, tuition increases and all those types of things. But at least it was an issue. And I think there was the other one where the kids were leaving from behind him, yep, yep. which is kind of a fine goldish type of approach to campaigning. I thought finally he was actually focusing on some issues that might get some traction for him. Uh, and the next rotation came around, and that's kind of, that seems to be gone for the moment. Maybe he'll come back to those things. Because I think those things are going to serve him far better than saying that Doyle's corrupt. I mean, everybody, I, again, I think most people think they're both corrupt. Yeah. I don't think well, any I think they've gone there. highly negative. Uh, this, all this corruption emphasis in the Green campaign because yeah. of the, um, the the Edelman Gate and that type of uh, thing, because those ads work. And I think that poll numbers you've just cited are an example of that. That the gap between Green and, and Doyle is closing, and it's closing because uh, people respond to the negative. They're mostly apolitical. They don't pay much attention to the issues. Uh, they don't know about the intricacies of how tuition is yeah. determined. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the Board of Regents that determines tuition. It isn't the governor that determines tuition, but he does appoint these people. Yeah. So, you know, that's... that's. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of situations here that uh, really go back, in my mind, to the whole need for campaign financing. And we talked off air how a lot of politicians are getting on the, on the bandwagon, but uh, they haven't proven that uh, in past performance that we should really do something, but here's an example in the governor's race of why we should have. I mean, you're talking about uh, ads being run by, by Green and by Doyle because of, well, either it's the PAC money that Green's taking or it's the, the uh, Edelman money contribution to Doyle or whatever. The it's, big, money. No, it, it's big <laughs> money being it's given money. to politicians <laughs> that if we had campaign financing, uh, public financing and campaign reform, we wouldn't have this plethora of negative ads of who's the biggest crook. And that's what's sad about this. Yeah, and this is Wisconsin. Yes. Where have we come in 10 years that the ads are all about who the biggest crook is? Yeah. Well, the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign reported the results of a poll, um, a Belden, Rusinello, and Stewart survey on, on political reform. Wisconsin concerns, and this is recent, the, Wisconsin citizens are most concerned by a large percentage with gas prices. Now, those have come down since the survey. Healthcare, state taxes, and the influence of money in politics are all within six percentage points. So the influence of money in, po uh, in politics is an issue that beats out jobs, corruption mm -hmm. in state government, public schools, and the economy which I thought was very interesting. 74% of Wisconsin residents believe that unless we limit the influence of money in government, elected officials will not be able to keep their promises on issues that are important. So there just seems to be this huge disconnect, and it's been ongoing, mm -hmm. between what people think about how awful money in, in campaigns is to the reality of who's buying and paying for these elections, and mm -hmm. what do they get? You know, it's, I don't know if it's so much a disconnect as both sides do it, and so both the Green Camp and the Doyle Camp say, well, we're the only two players in town. They're going to choose between one or the other, well, and they right. both are packing out and taking all kinds of money from, from uh, right. big contributors. So right. until uh, we get enough public pressure on the legislative branch of people who have really stellarly put this off the committee and not voted on it, uh, mm -hmm. they need to be 
stepping forward with some action too. All right. Well, and, and this does, and I did, <laughs> I normally don't cut things out of the newspaper, but this one just sent me around the bend. It was in the Journal so, Sentinel. Is it a recipe? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. For Snickers tort, no. <laughs> um, legislators join ethics cause late. Well, yeah. The hypocrisy award of the year, Republicans who killed the bill now use the issue in campaigns. Smart. I just can't get over this. <laughs> yeah. The Senate Nobody's bill. Nobody's paying attention, so you can get away bill, with this stuff. Senate Bill One, Senate Bill One, passed by the <clears throat> Senate last year, twenty-eight to five, to combine the State Ethics Board and the State Elections Board together. Bipartisan support in the Senate, which was pretty good all on its own, absolutely is stalling the Assembly. Now, three people who voted to stall it. Um, not anywhere near our districts, um, are now using that as campaign to say that when, if you reelect me, I'm going to support this. And um, to the Journal Sentinel's credit, it was front page news on Sunday. <laughs> when? This upsets me. Uh, how is this going to play out? Where's the, where are the leaders, I guess, is where I... What do we do to I, change I, I this? I think thing? it just shows that many politicians have a low uh, esteem of their own voters. I mean, they, they think I can be on both sides of this issue with impunity. And until we hold people more accountable for flip-flopping and, and trying to have a vote in both pockets, uh, they'll get away with this type of thing. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. people just don't pay enough attention or don't, again, hold their elected official accountable for playing games with their their viewpoints and their views. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a slap in the face to the electorate uh, who voted for these people. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. See, I, I mean, to see for what you, it's an issue. For me, I don't think it's an issue. I mean, it just is. That's what it is, you know. I, I don't get upset about that. I just think as a is it because you is it because you just don't get upset, or is this because you're so <laughs> jaded? Is it because you're just so jaded? Yeah. You know, so I'm like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm on that side. Okay, I mean, okay. I'm, I'm looking at her saying, "This is something that upsets you." I mean, I expect these people to be hypocrites, um, and I guess I've just, just, just gotten so. Yeah, I just have gotten. Yeah, I just have gotten so. I don't know. I, I think probably realistic about how politicians are going to behave. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> cynical, maybe, I guess is the word, uh, about some of these, how the behavior of some of these people are going to be. So I asked you actually a question there. Somewhere. Yeah, that's, oh, well. Are, 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 no, the are, issue doesn't just, bother me because, I, I mean, that goes on nationally. I see it all the time. You know, say one thing and for, the, the, for they say one thing in August, then another thing in September, then a third thing in November or in October. It happens all the time. So, and, I, and I can see this, this just seems fairly shameless to me. And I guess maybe my concern is there's nothing wrong with being a politician. We live in a partisan democracy, and it has served us well for 200 and some years. But you need to take the step from being a politician to being a legislator, to being a person who wins an election, to a person who is able to govern. And I don't know how and when that's happening. And with the quality of, of political discourse and the honesty that we bring to that, I, I don't know. I am rambling on and on. And it's just, uh, it is a matter of, of, of some concern to me, at least. <laughs> and I'm glad it's not to you, because that means the end of the world is not coming and, um, and all will be well. But you, you need to have candidates, whether they be in the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, who will say, um, as I've you know, advocated a couple of times, I'm only going to take uh, you know, no more than $100 from, a, from anybody or whatever mm -hmm. the number might be. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to take it from the people in my district. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to publish that on my website. And we're going to update it as often as we possibly can so you can see who's paying for this campaign. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to allow any other money outside of the people that I represent. And I think if you actually ran a campaign like that, I would like to think that, you know, yeah, you probably, at least at a local level, you might be able to get the message across enough that people might start resonating with that. I mean, it works for Herb Cole mm -hmm. in a perverse kind of way because he's so rich he can say, I can, I'm, I can be my own man. I'm not going to be beholden to anybody. And people, I mean, vote for Herb Cole and they, I mean, hardly a sterling senator. I mean, 
nice enough guy, but so I'm just wondering if, and obviously he can buy his own TV ads and everybody pays attention to TV ads, I suppose, in a certain sense that they're there and they're sort of the background noise while we eat dinner and things. Well, I, I, saw, I saw just an interesting table. Um, again, I think, I think the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign put out about the amount of money that was spent in the election and the result. This is in the September primary. Falk spent 888000 to Lautenschlager's 444,000. I mean, that's an interesting number. Um, down the line, in about 90% of the elections, the person who spent more money won. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just a reality. And that yeah. takes us back to what is real campaign reform we have a, a United States Supreme Court that equates money with free speech. Mm -hmm. To me, that nothing could be further from the truth. And, but as long as that is the, the template in which the Supreme Court makes decisions, I don't know what real campaign financing reform will look like. I think, I think it needs to be substantive because I think the scenario that Ken portrayed may work on a very local level. Yeah. Once you start getting into state senate races and above yeah. where they use television, yeah. the 30 second negative ad yeah. will assassinate your opponent if you say it over and over and buy enough time and dominate the airwaves. It's just proven. Money, repetitive negativism works. Okay. And it's just is reality. And the only way you get at that cancer of that continuing to be prevailing is to cut off the spigot here, and the spigot is the special interest groups and, and getting into public financing and putting f some types of limitation to force people to go yeah. door to door and do the other things mm -hmm. uh, that get people into real contact with people. The 30 second television ad is now the norm, and uh, when I ran, we never used television because we were too far from Milwaukee mm -hmm. or Green Bay. Mm -hmm. Now the Senate now candidates do. here do. Mm -hmm. I sure. mean, can you imagine the amount of money that's being spent on Green Bay and then uh, Milwaukee stations to influence the relatively small number of people in Sheboygan County? It's amazing. It's amazing. And when you have just countywide races, we still are able to avoid that. And mm -hmm. I think, I think in the mayoral race, didn't Schramm spend quite a bit more money? I think he had more money than Perez, and I think he spent it. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't necessarily, particularly at that local level, really right. mean that. But boy, it. It really when you get up is, the ladder, it makes a difference. It really sure. is very yeah. tough. So I'm speaking at a Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, candidate education forum uh, next week, if, if, if all goes well. And the Chamber has put on a fabulous uh, presentation of speakers and issues. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, if you want to run for public office these days, male or female, whatever, it's, it's tough. It's just a, it's a, it's a hardball game. And I don't think it serves the democracy particularly well. No. Well, I get to end on that nice speech. Thank you for joining us. And folks, we'll see you again, I hope, next month.